Welcome back, Hoosier fans, to another edition of the Three Man Weave. Max McCombs, Nathan Brown, joining you guys here from Assembly Hall. Uh, just watch IU defeat Nebraska, 76-47. A uh, little bit of a sluggish start there at the beginning, but IU really turned on the Jets about uh, eight minutes left in the first half and never really looked back. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was it was not the start anyone expected from from IU. Uh, as they have let some teams do, especially in the Big Ten, and then also against Butler. Uh, the game was slowed down, and that's not the pace IU wants to play. But the difference this time is they really did beat uh, Nebraska at their own game, even when it was slowed down. And eventually they started to speed the pace up, especially in the second half when they had 49 points, which is is just good no matter who you're playing, no matter what you're doing. Clearly you're, clearly you're doing something right if you score 49 and a half. Yeah. Um, so pretty, pretty much everything went right the second half. But it was sort of a matter of just adjusting. And Crean kept talking about after the game, waiting for their moment, waiting for things to click. And eventually it did. And Nebraska was just outmatched. I mean, they, they kept it close early because of some good rebounding early. They ended up being out-rebounded by quite a bit by IU in the end and good shooting. And IU shot terribly on open shots to open the game, and that's what, what hurt them early. Yeah, I'd say early on in the first half, um, they were able to get the ball down low, which is something that they'd struggled on um, in a couple games, especially against Illinois. Um, they did that really, really well against Ohio State uh, last Sunday and just weren't really able to convert early on in the first half. They were, I think, two for 11 in their first 11 shots. Nebraska was able to get out to an eight to four lead, um, held that to 14 to 11, um, and then IU went on a 10 point lead, sparked by a couple of three pointers, and really just never looked back. Yeah, and one thing that really kept IU in it, uh, at least when the shots weren't falling early, was the free throws. Uh, they mm -hmm. finished the game 24 of 29, which is something we've seen all year. Uh, this team's ability to get to the free throw line and to make them uh, is just, you know, it's head and shoulders above a lot of teams in college basketball. And really, when you look at it, that's what elite teams do. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to classify Indiana as an elite team in the college basketball, I think that's one of the things you have to start with. Of course, defense is also another thing that you have to start with. Now you did a great job playing defense today. And mm -hmm. it wasn't just, uh, you know, one effort, one guy, Oladipo getting a few seals here and there. It was a collective effort. And that's what shut down Nebraska. Mm-hmm. And building off of what you said about free throws a little bit, and, and not to, to tease anything too much, but that's what I wrote about. So pick up a copy of Thursday's IDS to, to see more about that. But, uh, I mean, as you said, IU really has been somewhat quietly doing really well from, from free throws recently. Uh, they're shooting over 86% in their last five games now. Uh, I think it's 100 for 116, which is, is impressive no matter how you look at it, and leading the Big Ten. Um, and tonight, tonight was actually slightly below that percentage, but it was just really timely free throws. That's what kept him in it early. Um, with Cody Zeller, who struggled through much of the first half, all three of his points in the first half were free throws because uh, he got he got to the line a lot because it was really the post players for Nebraska that were were getting in foul trouble early. Brandon Ubel and and Andre the Giant, Andre Almeida, is the nickname that he sort of acquired, or maybe he already had it, but it was new to me <laughs> during the game, and so that was fun. But uh, they both got in foul trouble, and, and I think that's one of the reasons Nebraska never got anything going. Yeah, and, you know, just that is going to be very important as this team moves on into tournament time, you know, Big Ten tournament, and wherever they're going to go in the NCAA tournament. A team that could get to the free throw line does two things. You're, one, putting pressure on the other team because you could be getting teams in foul trouble, at least guys down low, which IU did a great job tonight. And I believe it was about eight minutes left in the first half when two of Nebraska's big men both had three fouls on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that completely changes how an opponent is going to attack you. But the other thing is you're getting free points. And IU is just a good free throw shooting team this year where if you get to the free throw line, they're going to make those and they're going to make them count. I think mm -hmm. it also... Um, you know, different players and the team in general has used getting to the free throw line as a way to kind of get into a rhythm in the game. Zeller, as one of you mm -hmm. mentioned, struggled a bit in the first half, um, had to come out with I think a little bit more than nine minutes to go in the first half with two fouls and didn't see any more time in the first half. Um, got a quick third foul in the second half and took another, seat, uh, another stint on the bench. And then after that, 
you know, he came back in, he was much more physical, and was able to get to the foul line, and that seemed to kind of spark him. He had 13 points in the second half, uh, led the Hoosiers with a very quiet 16, actually, um, but was really kind of just able to get himself in a groove, I think, and at that point, that was really when I usually took off, and they uh, really just outmatched the Cornhuskers in general. Well, IU will put this win behind them as uh, they prepare for Purdue coming up this weekend on Saturday. Going to be another big game, of course, rivalry week in uh, college mm -hmm. basketball. No bigger rivalry than Indiana and Purdue in the Big Ten. At least not around these parts. <laughs> I mean, I think some folks in Kansas might have something to say about that or down in North Carolina, but around here, pretty much. How do you guys see this game turning out? Obviously, we saw the most lopsided victory uh, for a team going into Mackey Arena when IU beat down Purdue by 37 points. Do you expect to see more of the same, or do you think this one's going to be more of a contest? I don't know how, what changes about this one in Purdue's favor, honestly. A.J. Hammonds had the game of his life in, in that one, and they still lost by such a huge amount. This one is is in the hostile environment for Purdue this time, whereas is that they should have had the big advantage with that. And early on, maybe they did, but that's another story. But they're certainly not going to have any favors from the crowd this time. I mean, granted, some of the other guys besides Hammonds should play better, just to the law of averages and whatnot. But I don't see how this can be truly much more competitive than it was. I mean, I don't think it'll be as lopsided, but the, the way things are, are looking, I don't think it's going to be that competitive. I would, yeah, I would agree. I mean, like you said, they won by, you know, I can't remember what the score is off the top of my head now, more than 30 points, I think, is what it was. Um, and coming to IU, you would almost think that that would increase with the with the atmosphere, um, expecting humans to probably not have another huge game. game. Yeah, yeah, exactly, another huge game like he did. But I think it just, you know, it really depends on, does IU start off fast? Do they let Purdue think that they have any chance at pulling off an upset and you know older more experienced guys like DJ Bird if they get into a rhythm get fired up get you know into the away crowd atmosphere you know you know who knows what could happen but I certainly wouldn't expect to I uh, you have much trouble going into Saturday's game I think you're right Nathan when uh, rivals meet you gotta kind of throw what happened last time or throw the records out the window but it will be a great game as for this game Hoosiers win 76 47 they beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers but that will do it for us the IDS team here at Assembly Hall for Max McCombs Nathan Brown thanks for joining us again on the three-man weave and for all your Hoosier basketball news check out the IDS and Hoosier hype but thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you on Saturday from IU Purdue. Yeah, have a good one. See you, folks.